Thank you very much to the International Aid Society for this uh, opportunity to be able to speak to you today. I'm going to talk about HIV AIDS in the era of climate change. And I wanna start by acknowledging that today we live in the age of syndemics. When we say syndemics, uh, this refers to the interplay of different epidemics happening at the same time, interacting with each other. So of course, we cannot ignore the fact that we still are living in the middle of a pandemic, COVID-19. But also, and um, as we are gathered here today, we are also uh, focusing on another important uh, pandemic, which is HIV AIDS. But we shouldn't also forget about the other major global crisis that we are still confronting now as we speak and continue, which is also continuing to um, evolve um, and, and worsen. And that is the global emergency of climate change. And these are some um, information from, from 2019 alone. Um, if you look at the rankings of countries in terms of uh, climate vulnerability or climate risk, according to uh, the organization German Watch, uh, these are the countries that are badly affected by climate change uh, as shown in terms of climate risk. Number one, Mozambique. Number two, Zimbabwe. Number five, Malawi. And number six, Afghanistan. And all these countries are also countries that are badly affected uh, by the HIV epidemic, as you can see in the rankings in terms of the number of people uh, with the virus or um, in terms of the changes in uh, new cases of HIV infection. So what we're seeing now around the world is that the countries that are highly vulnerable to climate change are also being affected uh, by the HIV AIDS epidemic. And this is also the situation in my home country, the Philippines. The Philippines is known as one of the countries in the world that is most vulnerable to climate change. But also uh, in recent years, it has been deemed as the country with the highest uh, rate of increase of HIV infections in the Western Pacific region. So here you will see, this is a map or this is a, a diagram showing to you uh, the increase in HIV cases uh, in my country over the past uh, 30 years. And before, when I was still a medical student, we used to describe the situation as low and slow. But in recent years, as you can see in this uh, uh, graph, uh, the cases of HIV AIDS in the country has dramatically uh, increased. And as I've also said already a while ago, the Philippines is also uh, a hotspot for climate change. This is the map of Southeast Asia, the region where the Philippines is located. And in this map, the redder the country is, the more vulnerable the country is to the impacts of long-term climate change. And unfortunately, uh, the Philippines, my home country, is the reddest of them all, just showing to you and demonstrating to you uh, its um, high degree of vulnerability to the climate crisis. We know that climate change as a threat multiplier will be affecting health in so many different ways. So this diagram uh, from the Lancet uh, Climate and Health Commission shows to you that there are many different pathways by which climate change affects human health, whether through storms or typhoons or drought or extreme flooding or heat waves. And all of these climate related phenomena will eventually impact different uh, health outcomes, as you can see on your right. And, um, you know, some of these, um, you know, issues include um, reversals, for instance, in nutritional gains that we've seen over the past decades, uh, increase in infectious diseases that are sensitive to climate change, mosquito-borne diseases, waterborne diseases, etc., and even injuries and, and death, mortality, resulting from the direct impact, for instance, of uh, extreme weather events like typhoons and uh, extreme flooding and storm surges. But as you remember from the previous slide, um, HIV AIDS is not often uh, thought of as uh, connected to the climate crisis. 
And so this is uh, you know working um, uh, you know graph, a work in progress uh, that we've developed. We've tried to identify the multiple pathways by which climate change connects uh, or links which, with the HIV AIDS uh, epidemic. And what we're seeing is that there are at least three major pathways which, we'll, which I will be talking about shortly uh, that, uh, uh, by which climate change uh, impacts uh, the health of, for instance, people living with HIV AIDS or uh, affects, for instance, the uh, ability of these communities to receive healthcare that they need. So for example, um, clim one of the major impacts of climate change is extreme weather events. Uh, as I've mentioned already a while ago, typhoons uh, or hurricanes, for instance, in North America, uh, intense flooding, et cetera. And when we know that when extreme weather events uh, uh, do strike, uh, there's so many uh, disruptions that happen in society, in the communities. So for example, um, you know, it can result to crop failures leading to massive food insecurity. And we know that good nutrition is vital for the improvement of the quality of life, for instance, of people living with HIV AIDS, uh, among other, uh, you know, vulnerable populations. Of course, when typhoons and other extreme weather events also do occur, um, communities are forcibly displaced from their, um, you know, hab habitations. And this forced migration will lead to a lot of uh, disruption, for instance, uh, in relation to food insecurity, food access, but also access to essential health care. Um, and, and we know that, uh, you know, especially for people living with HIV AIDS, it's important that they receive um, consistent and, and sustained, um, you know, health care and, and medications uh, in order to ensure that uh, they have a high uh, quality of life and good health outcomes. It's not just the extreme weather events related to climate change that will uh, jeopardize the health of communities affected by HIV AIDS. There are also other slow onset effects related to climate change that we should be uh, concerned about. So for instance, changes in temperature and precipitation can also drive the re-emergence of existing and old climate sensitive infectious diseases such as dengue and other mosquito-borne diseases, waterborne diseases as well. Um, but also um, in coastal areas, for instance, in countries like the Philippines, an archipelago of more than 7,000 islands, we are now seeing the impacts of sea level rise, again, resulting from uh, climate change, from the melting of the ice caps. And this sea level rise will lead to uh, the intrusion of seawater into freshwater sources, which can lead to increasing salinity of drinking water. And there's growing evidence that uh, intake of water that is high in salt can also lead to a wide range of health outcomes, such as high blood pressure, uh, kidney stones, and others. And of course, with a growing um, insecurity related to climate change in the long run, there is also uh, the huge potential for mental stress and climate anxiety, which we're already seeing in some of the communities, for instance, here in the Philippines and in other climate vulnerable countries. And we know that mental health is also vital uh, to ensure that uh, people living with HIV AIDS and other communities uh, do have a high level of uh, you know, mental well-being and emotional well-being, which eventually will lead to a higher quality of life. And another uh, pathway or route uh, by which climate change is going to affect, uh, you know, communities affected by HIV AIDS, albeit uh, indirectly, is through ambient air pollution. We know that the sources of greenhouse gas uh, emissions uh, are also the sources of uh, ambient air pollution, particulate matter, uh, and other uh, toxic substances. And, um, you know, ambient air pollution has already been shown to affect, for instance, uh, the health of uh, people living with HIV AIDS in some, as, as you can see on, on the screen, it affects uh, cardiovascular disease outcomes. Uh, it increases the susceptibility to opportunistic infections such as P. Girovecci. Um, and, uh, you know, also affects uh, neurocognition 
uh, for instance, as shown in one uh, study among uh, adolescents uh, with uh, HIV AIDS. So, you know, these are just some of the outcomes, the negative health outcomes that are uh, being seen in populations affected by HIV AIDS who are also exposed to high levels of air pollution. And so I just gave to you a glimpse of the myriad health consequences of climate change, of course, to the general population, but also uh, more specifically to communities affected by HIV AIDS. And, you know, right now we are concerned about the first wave, the second wave, the third wave of COVID. I think we should also be equally concerned and bothered uh, by the long-term health consequences, not just the waves, but the future tsunamis of health consequences that climate change will bring about if we don't get our acts together now. And as you remember, um, you know, this graph uh, has been, um, you know, very much uh, popular and circulated over the past year. We need to flatten the curve of COVID-19. I think that this is also, uh, this should also be the mantra uh, in terms of addressing the climate crisis. We need to flatten the curve of our ecological footprint of our carbon emissions, if we want a healthy planet uh, in order to improve the health of our human populations. And the major difference between the COVID curve and the climate curve is that the health system's capacity can be increased. We can add more beds, hospital beds, buy more medicines, recruit more nurses and other health workers. But unfortunately, the Earth's capacity is constant unchangeable and non-negotiable. So the only option that we have is to really act on climate change in order to improve the health of populations now and in the decades to come. And so I would like to invite uh, the HIV AIDS uh, scientific community to embrace what we now call a planetary health approach. And a planetary health approach recognizes the inextricable link between the health of people and the health of the planet. And as a physician, I always say that right now, I already have two patients, not just people, but also the planet as well. And in the era of planetary health, we need to make massive changes uh, in our healthcare system, including in the way we respond to the health needs of uh, communities affected by HIV AIDS. We, want, we must make sure that in the 21st century, in the era of planetary health, our health systems are not only universal, which remains to be an unfinished business in our sector, but also high value. We want patients to leave hospitals and health systems, not just healthier, but also happier because they are satisfied with the healthcare that they receive. It's safe, it's high quality, it's also affordable and responsive. But also in the era of planetary health, we need to make sure that our health systems are climate smart. And climate smart is the convergence of being adaptive to the effects of climate change, but also not contributing to the exacerbation of the climate crisis by reducing our own emissions as I've, what I've mentioned a while ago. And so we need to be climate resilient. We need hospitals and health facilities that are disaster ready, low carbon, but also green and sustainable. And we want also in the era of COVID-19, which is part of this planetary health story, that our health systems are pandemic resistant. We need to make sure that this is the last pandemic and that in the future, we're able to detect early, respond quickly with resources ready and can usher a faster and better recovery. And so when we talk about and we think about HIV pro AIDS programming um, in the era of climate change, we need to find ways you know, uh, to, to make uh, our programs, our public health programs, our health facilities, the health workers that provide HIV care to communities to be climate resilient and also to be environmentally sustainable. And I invite you to visit this uh, you know, newest uh, publication from the World Health Organization, which lays down some of the measures that we can do in healthcare to make sure that our provision of health is climate resilient and environmentally sustainable. I think this is very much applicable 
to the HIV AIDS community and to all other uh, health communities uh, in our sector. And as I've already mentioned a while ago, we also need to reduce our own emissions. And this is a new report that I had the privilege of uh, co-authoring, uh, you know, a roadmap for decarbonizing the health sector. And we can only do that if we adopt green and, sus green, uh, and sustainable healthcare as part of universal healthcare, which we call green UHC. And a green UHC system will reduce the emissions uh, of the health sector, but also will make sure that there is a healthy planet for all peoples, including patients and communities affected by the HIV AIDS epidemic. And here, we can also lead uh, as a sector in calling for broader mitigation efforts uh, in other sectors, outside the health sector, in the energy sector, in the food and agricultural sector, our transport systems, um, and, and the way cities are being designed, all of these uh, need to reduce their emissions in order to achieve the goals of the Paris Agreement, in order to stabilize uh, the climate, which eventually will uh, lead to a lot of uh, a wide range of health co-benefits, both to physical and to also and also to mental health. And this will benefit all of our patients, all of our populations, but more specifically, our communities affected by the HIV AIDS epidemic. And so I would like to invite the HIV AIDS community to join us in ushering, in building the foundation towards a green, healthy, and just post-COVID recovery. We need to make sure that uh, all our efforts from now and until this pandemic is over uh, will lead us to a greener future. Uh, a stabilized climate, and of course, um, healthier and more sustainable communities. I also invite our HIV AIDS scientific community to join us. This is um, a publication that we made last year uh, in The Lancet. Um, as we all know, we have the Hippocratic Oath, which is a pledge that we in the health professions do recite before we enter medical practice. What we did, is we revised and rewrote the Hippocratic Oath to make it applicable for the era of planetary health. And so I invite you to read and to embrace and to recite this pledge. We want the, your community, our community, to be committed to the advancement of the planet's health, which will benefit the health of our patients and our uh, human populations. And so we want to build this kind of doctor uh, and health professional who is embracing, you know, planetary health principles, protecting the climate, protecting the planet in our pursuit to also protect and advance the health of our patients and our communities. And there's so much that the climate, the planetary health movement, and the HIV AIDS uh, community um, to, to learn from each other. Uh, and, you know, to find synergies to work together. And so I hope that uh, this uh, short presentation that I have given uh, will usher this uh, potential collaborations. We need to form a movement of movements that will bring us all together uh, and, adv and advance our shared causes for health, for equity, for rights, for justice, and for a more sustainable uh, planet for us and for the future generations. And lastly, uh, and I already mentioned it, we need to adopt a rights-based approach. And I think the, the rights-based based approach, which the HIV AIDS community has advanced uh, for decades, uh, can also be helpful in achieving our goals for uh, stabilizing the climate and protecting our planet in the long run. And I would like to read from uh, the International Guidelines on HIV and Human Rights uh, by the UNAIDS. In the context of HIV AIDS, an environment in which human rights are respected ensures that vulnerability to HIV AIDS is reduced. Those infected with and affected by HIV AIDS live a life of dignity without discrimination. And personal and societal impact of HIV infection is alleviated. And I want to add, that this should be achieved with a healthy climate and a sustainable planet as the foundation. So together, 
let's advance the health of people and planet.